Hello, people of the internet. Welcome new subscribers, welcome old subscribers, welcome everybody. My intro's not changing, don't worry. This is just a little uh, explanation of what's going on. So also, hello live chat, yes. And you know what that means if I'm saying hello live chat. This is a bad content series episode. This video is over an hour long. I am just letting everybody know who is watching this live with me. Hi, how are you? I'm good, and you? So, yeah, I understand I made a post in my community tab saying that, you know, like, stuff's happening right now. Yeah, you know, and that is very true. And I guess I am busy, yes, I am kind of tired. I'm a little tired today. Not too bad. <laughs> uh, but I have decided to make content today. Yay! Yay me, I get to upload something. Hurrah! The joke's up. I'm uploading something. It's a sketchbook tour. It's the 420 sketchbook tour. I've been throwing this one back and forth for a little bit because I had some edits and stuff like that pre-made and it didn't end up making the cut. So in the end, since I didn't know it would take an hour, over an hour to film, but in addition to it taking an hour, uh, it's been a really long time. Because when you're editing, you have to sit and watch the video again, again, and again, make sure it's working. So I've been sitting and editing this for about three hours now. Uh, so there's no, to speed things up and just to get the video out, there's no polished edits. There's no beautiful stuff that I normally do. It's just a video, a kind of crappy video, a kind of bad content video. <laughs> However, despite this being bad content, do not worry, my content will get better. I will have more stuff lined up. I'm working on it this weekend a little bit while I have time to myself. Uh, yeah, thank you for supporting my work. Thank you for 1,420 subscribers, but of now that has changed. So welcome my 1,505 subscribers. <laughs> thank you very much again. Uh, on with the content, thank you very much. I know I sound pretty beat up, tired, but I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, enjoy the video. Bye. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to the 420 Sketchbook Tour. Ah, good yells. So, hello, everybody. My name is Witchit, and why is it significant that it's the 1,420 subscriber milestone? And this video is the second time I'm recording this and we've already surpassed that, so it's uh, 1.5K LMAO. But the whole reason behind that is this. Yes, that is a chunk of my hair. I got my hair cut yesterday. <laughs> and I'm very much happier with it. But the whole significance is not because I smoke that good old fashioned dank, but because my hair was a uh, weed green for a very long time. It's quite faded now, but this was the color it was for about a good solid year or two. I couldn't get this aqua color out of my hair. Well, my friend sent me some blue hair dye. I'm gonna have some super cool jean colored hair. No, I ended up having turquoise hair because it was green. And whenever you have green in blonde hair, um, it doesn't come out. <laughs> so I was stuck with this marijuana in my hair, and I was like, damn, now I'm like a living 420 blaze it every 20 seconds. Don't, don't come after me. Don't smoke my hair, please. It's not good. Now, don't ask why I have, uh, I stole my hair from the hairdresser. Um... I, pull, I just pulled it out of my pocket and I showed my mom when we were driving home. <laughs> she looks at me and she thinks I'm a freaking creep. So during this sketchbook, because this sketchbook's really old, this was, uh, I finished this, uh, the start of 2018. So, excuse the art, and this took about a year to finish. So, it's going to be 2017-2018 art. <sighs> so, I waited for a personal moment to open up the sketchbook. Yeah, 1000's pretty cool and dope. So I put the sketchbook where I thought I made the most improvement within like a shorter time frame, so it's more recent art. If you don't know, I'll link it in the i card, the description, the thing. 
This is the first, and besides everyone voted on it during a live stream, which by the way, <laughs> self-promotion, uh, I live stream sometimes. I also have a Twitch and I sometimes live stream on YouTube, so if you catch me there, you should check my Instagram and my Twitter for updates on that, because sometimes, you know, YouTube doesn't like to notify people, so if you want to be part of a live stream and see me fail live, there you go. But yes, this was decided on a live stream. Uh, this is a sketchbook I finished not too long ago. Like, long enough to where my art's obviously improved dr drastically. This sketchbook, however, is the very first sketchbook I started when I started taking art seriously. This is the sophomore, sophomore junior year sketchbook. Now, why is this important? I was given a $50 gift card to Michaels, and this was the sketchbook I decided I wanted. And that's why I got washi tape too, so I put that on there. And this was the start of it all. This was the start of my love for illustration and the art cult and everything. I have many other books and sketchbooks like that that are dedicated to art when I was even younger, but obviously I was just doing art because I liked art. This is the serious sketchbook, the serious boy. Now, when you start art, you're not very good. So cringe warning ahead, maybe not for you, but for me, there's not some fantastic art in here. There's not good art in here. There's really bad art in here, but there's a lot of learning we can do. Okay, it's been four minutes. Let's roll with this. Oh, come on guys, we're opening this book, come on. This book gives me fear. Uh, this book gives me anxiety, cause, uh, 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 oh, this is the first sketchbook. This is the start of it all. Okay, let's let's crack this open. Let's see what's on the first page. Okay, well, bam. What do you know? It's a collage swatch page. Uh, I got the. I actually have the watercolor palette. So I bought for fifty dollars. I bought art supplies, and I just started off everything right so you see like you see some pencil sketches you see some ballpoint pen sketches I used to be the queen of ballpoint pen during this I just had to open my drawer sorry and this was also in there but I bought these two watercolor palettes this is a shimmery artist loft watercolor palette it's okay I found out recently that they, they actually fade but it seems like this sketchbook kind of survived they're not as shiny as they once were like in the palette and all of them are silver based, so even if you like try to pick up the gold, it's not actually gold, it's just, it's just silver gold, which is kind of yucky. But it's not bad. But this is the holy grail. This is my absolute favorite cheap watercolor palette ever. This is the Prang watercolors. Now, I also owned, at the time, uh, I later on bought it because I was babysitting and I wanted to use these watercolors for myself and I wanted to get something for the girls that I looked after. And I always thought that, like, you know, like, chalky watercolors, I actually just destroyed my, like, my first set of, like, bad cheap watercolors that's, like, chalk. Because the palette's actually nice and I want to fill it up with nice watercolors. But that's besides the point. We're tangenting. We're tangenting! Okay. But this is my favorite because it had this large mixing tray. I could put water in these pots. Uh, this used to slide. It doesn't really anymore. You could put a brush in here. You could actually order individual pans, but it was really expensive because they wanted you to bulk order them because this obviously is a school brand. There's like free art supplies for your school. Prang Power. I think Prang is a brand by... <sighs> Made in Mexico. Dixon! So those pencils you normally get? This is Ticonderoga. I don't think this is like Dixon brand. But anyway, those pencils, those regular like yellow pencils you use at school, the Dixon pencils, that was this brand. So I was like, oh, these, these gotta be like, these gotta be mmm. But just like their pencils, standard but good and trustworthy, so are their watercolors. And I believe Tamayaka, Tamayaki, Tamaya, yeah, the lady that's also the same age as me that has way more subscribers and way better art and has very aesthetic sketchbooks. Yeah, her, she uses these watercolors. However, I had them before I found out she had them. <laughs> I'm so cool. But these watercolors were actually like the greatest thing ever. Um, 
What I liked about this set compared to like a Crayola when they had the 16 set, the colors are actually quite different and they mix really well. I'm sure I watched a video where they compared like a bunch of cheap watercolors and they said, yeah, these were the best. And I'm like, yeah, my boy Prang. Yeah, my boy Prang. He's the best. He's the best. Don't question my boy Prang. And I would bring these to school with me and I would paint at school. And let me just say, I would use these over the really expensive watercolors just because they were so good. I, I love these watercolors so much. Especially if you like really simple anime illustrations and you don't necessarily want any of like the super fancy stuff that comes with more expensive watercolors. You know, like the granulation and all that. You know, like the fancy technical stuff when you start getting into higher pigments. Nah man, these are just the standard Bs. These are your ink ones. I would say if you want to level up your game, get these. These are the Kuratake watercolors. And they're kind of like, they're not the same formula necessarily, but they're very similar. They're like, the, they're already pre-moistened. I know a lot of, everyone likes to use the term Western watercolors. <laughs> Those Americans and they're really dry, a rip, <sighs> Arabic gum, Arabic gum, there we go. Arabic gum and that's used in a lot of uh, American watercolors and that's why I always got spooked by Western watercolors because you never know with them if you're gonna get super chalky ones or not. With these it's actually impossible for them to be chalky. The only thing is you can't layer with them. These ones, these ones struggle with layering a lot. Uh, those ones do, these ones do too obviously. It's just that that whole mantra, mantra, yes mantra, of a uh, since they're wet, you avoid the chalkiness, but at a cost. The cost is you can't layer. <laughs> but yeah, I live by these watercolors. I want to use them again. I love them. They smell like school, but like, like kind of sweet school. They have a weird scent to them, and they're non-toxic, I think. But yeah, so this is the start. I had cut out some stuff from obviously like lined paper, and I had just started. I'm gonna flip this over so I can see the other side. Like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what these are. She's bald. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so I, I think, um, no. No, this isn't ink just yet. No, this is black watercolor. I haven't discovered ink just yet. And then as you can see right here, these are like testing out styles. This, if you can see properly, I hope you can. Sometimes I can't tell, my viewfinder's kind of whack. Camera problems aside. So with this particular page and this style in particular right here, this one was meant to copy the Lost in Translation, which is a K-pop, um, K, yes, a K-pop webtoons. A really good webtoons, may I add, but it's, and it's gorgeous, and oh, hands down, the writer does such a, a fantastic job, but that's what this style was going after, and I did not portray it very well, and obviously, I did not know how to use watercolor uh, to color in stuff, so kind of ignore that. I, I think my styles changed quite drastically. These are all such anime styles where like, um, the eye doesn't necessarily touch. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. I think that's a little bit better. But like, none of, it's like you see the lash. It kind of looks like Shannon's style. I actually didn't know about Creepshow art back when I made this book at all. The only artist I think I followed at the time was, and a couple other like OG. And of course, the fantastic and great Zabio Arts. That was someone else I followed during this time period. And you will see, I think, on like the next page. No, not the next page. <laughs> I just saw something really bad. Ooh! Uh, but yeah, so this is all like super anime style where it's like the eyes don't touch. Now I do the full closed eye. I've gotten over my anime. Don't want to touch eyes. Don't want to have them connect. I'm getting, I'm doing better, guys. I'm evolving my style. It's getting good. I'm learning. And then this is figure drawing. Lord knows this is not figure drawing. And I think some of these are referenced and some of them are from memory. Uh, that one, this one's the only one referenced and 
Jeez, can we just, whoopsie. Can we just like give this a moment of silence? Damn, my art's come a long freaking way. Oh my God. Just, oh my God, can we like zoom in? My camera doesn't zoom in very fast, but just, oh my God. It's not good. It's not good. I did not come out of the womb birthing out digital paintings like tomorrow, guys. Do not worry. Slow camera is slow, guys. I apologize. I have my other camera, but the thing is, uh, you guys know what this is always going to be tangenting. Why would you sign up for a video of mine if you weren't here for me? You're not here for this trash. You're here for me. Just kidding. You're here for both. Just kidding. Haha, <laughs> you're here for nothing. You're just watching my videos and being really nice to me. Thank you very much. I love you all. Um, but uh, it runs on cassette tapes. <laughs> it runs on HD cassette tapes. And there's one blank tape and I actually figured out how to like transfer them onto the computer. So I'm trying to do that right now. It's a work in progress, but yeah, so it runs on cassette tape, but it's an HD camera. Kind of weird, kind of foreign, kind of old. This this camera is really cool, but it's so limited even though it's the like it's pretty new. It's the PowerShot uh, series. So the other one has, it's much quieter, it's much better, it's got zoom, it's got manual focus, and it's so much better. It's just the only thing is it runs on cassette tapes. And I've got one empty cassette tape, and if I could figure out how to transfer each file each time it goes through, I could make higher quality content with a vintage appeal. A hey. sound good? Hopefully. So I'm trying to get that camera fixed, and then also it's just got a lot of really old photos from like uh, when I was a kid, and I lived, uh, I would go back and visit South Africa, and we'd go on our safaris and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's just what that is. Okay, we're continuing. Don't worry. This is going to be a pretty long video, because this book's extra thick. Now this is where I started watching a ton of Xavier Arts. Um... And I still live by his content, and when he disappeared, it made me so sad. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that he's kind of doing better, and he wants to start from scratch again. And I think he's an absolutely amazing person. Please go check him out. It's Zabio Arts. Um, if you want to learn how to, like, start and make your art look almost instantly better, it's very good ground rules. But obviously, you need to branch out from what he does, because obviously, he's kind of withholding some secrets, my dudes. So just know that it comes with practice and he is a great starting point if you want to enhance anything. And then you can go on and learn more stuff through trial and error. Hi mom. But um, this is another test of that uh, Lost in Translation style. I love web comics. I need to read more than I read so many. And then I went off of them for a while, but they're really good. I like web comics. I wanted to try to do web comics, but we all know what happened there. <laughs> I think I'll try games next. Oh wait, I did, and that also failed. But I'm trying, guys. I'm working hard, I promise. Okay. So I had watched his posing tutorial. I live by that tutorial, by the way. It's also really good. It's like I had tried here here, here, like these are just like, you know, like the standard mock-up, and then I tried here. I think I was listening to his how to make an anime video, and it was just him rambling, and he was saying, sometimes you do your best art when you're not thinking about doing art, and I agree with that entirely. So if you want to turn on someone talking about something like me who rambles and doesn't necessarily talk about how to do stuff, just talks, and gets you like inspired kind of, and you think is funny, or just maybe calm, or just find someone that talks about something, like a podcast, anything, that you don't necessarily need to like watch the screen, and just put it on and draw. Because the second, because sometimes music doesn't work, I have seen that for people, and sometimes music doesn't work for me, it gets me inspired to think about the piece. Like if I wanna do like say, like a piece about Joji, 
Uh, filthy Frank, who everyone likes to compare me to. I'm the art filthy Frank. Oh, -wee. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> but if you want to put on music, like I would put maybe dancing in the dark or slow dancing in the dark. My bad. Uh, I would be very focused on a piece about that, and it would kind of just enhance the essence of the piece. But podcasts take me away from my piece, and they just, I just do everything mindlessly and it helps me to think less about what I'm doing and more about what I'm not. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it just, it sometimes really does help. So this was actually at the time one of the best pieces I had ever done. That's saying a lot because this is kind of bad. But at the time, this was really good for me and I was very happy with it. And I know there's a lot of... <laughs> Like, ah, oh, but his hands are so tiny. Why are his hands so tiny? What's wrong with his shoulders? Oh, what's wrong with his arms and his feet and everything? Oh, it's bad. I know. I'm sorry. But yes. Yes, I'm sorry that this is all so bad. But just at the time, this was the best I had done. Because I just, I wasn't focusing on it. And I was just, you know, doing it. Next tangent aside to flip the page. Okay, this is just galaxies using um, Crayola watercolors. Nothing special here. I was babysitting a bunch of children again and they wanted to do something fun and I thought, oh, galaxies is easy. So this is the galaxy page. Next. Ooh. And then the back of this page kind of got ruined. So like I stuck a little bit of painter's tape and I kind of just made the back. And then I tried putting cellophane on top of the Crayola watercolors and it came out really cool. Kind of made like this icy effect. If you can see, kind of. I like it. I like working with water. I, I really like the whole traditional art mantra. Ma I'm using that word today. That's the, that's the big word of today. Mantra. But just like the whole feel of traditional art, I feel is so much easier than digital. I mean, obviously traditional art is harder in a sense of you have to have the materials and whatnot. But with it, there's like experimenting in a way of logic, kind of. Like, oh, I put cellophane on top and something's gonna happen. Like it's more experimenting physically and seeing what you can do with the medium to manipulate it with digital art. It's very, look up a tutorial and this is what this does and this is what that does. It's all numbers and it's more focused in, you know, so you can experiment with what the, the image will look like and you know it will look like. That makes sense. I'm very rambly today. You might not want to, <laughs> you might not want to completely pay attention to this video. You might want to be drawing or something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm a mess. Okay, this, I still really like this one. I think the nose is a little messed up, but I really like the pink, and geez, her neck is thin. Dang. But I like the hair, I like the poofy hair and everything. And then this one was another experiment. I was trying to not use white ballpoint pen, because I have a ton, like a crap ton of not ballpoint pens that are not white, like, I have all my standard, like, Uniball Signos now, and I buy them, and they're the best things ever. But at the time, I had one really cheap, super cheap, I can actually find them, it's in the drop, it's in the junk drawer. It's these boys, you can get them literally anywhere, and it's like, I don't know what they are. But it's like this trash, and these are really bad. Crazy art, of course. Crazy art and rose art, the the minor trash of the art supply. Creole is queen, that's why. And not even Crayola tries to make gel pens, unless I unless I missed out on that. But I tried using this to highlight the hair differently. Oh geez, ew, that's a gross color. Um, it kind of worked, kind of didn't. It'll be a work in progress. Next page. I'm just gonna throw this over here. Ooh, okay, well, I tried making this. This is just philosophical at this point. The shadows are sharing headphones. Cute. Make a Pinterest 
post about it, make a Tumblr post about it, okay. This started a whole freaking revolution. This was the mini smalls phase of my life. I wanted to learn how to draw buildings like her. So I took to Google Maps and I said, uh, I'm not gonna draw buildings from America or anywhere. I'm gonna draw them from Japan. And so I have drawn tons and tons of Japanese buildings. Do I sound stuffy? I think I sound stuffy. <coughs> Moving on, but I really liked this. I like how the colors just like a little bit of colors lined paper, you know I'm better at drawing buildings now by the way Much better Just kidding. You can't even tell the difference. I still probably draw buildings like that if I don't have like a ruler But I think drawing buildings is a really fun and relaxing way to do something This is experimenting with the sparkly watercolors I also had a problem with not drawing on the back of paper to make these sketchbooks even less aesthetically pleasing. Please use the front and back. If you want to do, if you want to be a YouTuber, please use the front and back. And if you're going to do it, like tape something or pin something, just put something on the back because when you watch this, blank page, pretty page. This is not pretty at all. But yeah, this is just, I think, black watercolor ballpoint pen for the flowers and then just trying to use like my prang and sparkly watercolors sparkly artist loft watercolors this paper also holds up pretty well to be honest despite being mixed media okay this I did at school this was very fun and pretty and I love the colors of it and this yeah this started a different story there's a new timeline option here LMAO but with this, I got a compliment from someone. It was an upperclassman at the time, and I think I was, yeah, I think this is, I've hit junior year now. Junior year? Junior or sophomore year? Which one is it? I think at this point, this is junior year. This is the start or the middle of junior year, and I got a compliment from someone from this. She really liked the fact that I was drawing feminine water people like this. And this, this girl ended up being in my art class. And that started the biggest, this girl nearly made me quit art at that point. I'm being dead serious. She almost made me quit art. It was that bad. She was that terrible, terrible. Now at this point, this is all breaking away from me being an acrylic painter. That's what I used to do, that was my thing. I can take off one of my paintings from my wall right now. But this is what I used to do. I used to go to a class and I'd paint on canvas. And that was the, that was the extent of my art. And at that point, I was starting to get a little bit tired. But not so much. But she was the one that made me hate acrylics. And that could, deserves a story time all on its own. But she made me, she literally made me quit painting. And I can never sit down and do another acrylic painting, just like a painterly acrylic painting. I can no longer do that. I've got so many more examples of what I used to do uh, somewhere. Do you want to see it? That'll be a different video. I can throw that in like a bonus meme sketchbook if you guys want to see the whole chronological of my art journey. But art... <sighs> I don't think I could ever paint on another big canvas again. And that's throwing back another reason why that just reinforced my hatred of acrylic painting. You can go see my most popular uh, story time video, the, the worst first commission story. That's on my channel, I can link that below. I can do something. But yeah, this, that was all later though. But she, the girl that complimented this exact drawing, she was the one that started my hatred and it carried over that commission story of why I hated acrylics at the time. So, we're moving forward. These are noses. I was following some tutorial, I forgot what tutorial it was, of this really nice watercolor artist. And this is the disaster that ensued. Kinda just, you couldn't use watercolor on both sides. So I discovered that the hard way. And then this, this was fun. You guys have, if you've been around on my channel enough, uh, 
This is what done with my friend Naomi. I think, yeah. These were done, these are, I did a watercolor scribble, this, one's, this one will be empty forever, but I did a watercolor like blob and then I drew on top of it and these ones were super cute and fun. I still like the squid pants. <laughs> but yeah, this was fun. And there's more on the back. But you know, these were super fun, these were super cute, and I really enjoyed these. But the thing is, I don't know. None of them are super great, but I still think they're fun and cute. Now this is a frustration page. I tried doing that technique from this page that turned out well. Well, this one didn't. I had tried to cover, oh yeah, and it carried over the back. I tried to cover stuff and if we should know something, you can't cover anything with watercolor, that just doesn't work. And then I tried putting, um, rubbing alcohol splotches, that didn't work. You know what? This was just a bad, bad page. It was sad. And so it bled to the back, yay! And then it bled to this page, yay! So I decided to try use the blobs to the best of my abilities to make them a little bit better. And we came up with these, and these are kind of cute. Excuse me, my camera just shut off. But this is the Christmas of 2017 or 2018. I'm gonna say 2017, based on the fact that this took a very long time to finish. And I had just gotten water brushes, and I was using my paints, and then I had found a white crayon, I was trying to do this. And yeah, very scribbly. And then I had done this, and I think uh, my Instagram, I think I posted this on my Instagram. Now this was back when I went underneath a different name. I think I was digitally confused, or just something like that. Yeah, it was digitally confused, I think. And then I eventually changed my name and found a brand name, and that's where Witchit comes from. Congratulations. Hello everybody, my name is Witchit. That's where that comes from. But this is when I was under a different name and you cannot find this on my Instagram anymore. I have, I went through a phase where I took down anything that wasn't aesthetic enough. Like, you know how I have my very fake looking backgrounds and I put my pictures in them and it sometimes ruins the quality so bad and it's bad and it's ugh. I'm working on getting off of that so I can post more to Instagram, I promise. But, Yes, that whole thing of, unless it was a mock-up, that's what they're called, they're called mock-ups. Uh, yeah, it didn't make the cut, so these are all archived. The post still exists somewhere in the Instagram algorithm, but only I can see it. So yeah, these will probably never see the surface again, because they're all tagged with digitally confused anyway, so yeah. This was the next thing I posted, and I tried being aesthetic and putting the pencil and the pen, uh, Actually, I actually have the pencil right here that I tried putting next to it. Yeah, I just tried to do that. Like, you know, where you aesthetically put the pencil, and you're like, yeah, man, I just drew this, and I plopped that right there. Look how aesthetic and perfect that is. Yeah. And I think I had just watched a Matthew Patrick video, or game theory, because I love Matthew Patrick. I think he's great, and I refuse to watch any of the videos, which I will probably watch eventually about what he's done wrong, because I, I still don't know what he did wrong, So I, and I want to know what he did wrong. Okay, continue. I'll watch some later today. I just haven't had time. I've been at school. School is busy. Hard work. <sighs> but split. I think I had watched the kid or squid, and I decided to do the Splatoon style. This is obviously not the Splatoon style. This is my style, plus Splatoon inspiration, so I think the caption of this was No squids in my country, LMAO. Most likely. And then I tried doing something down here and that didn't really work out. Continuing. Oh. Oh. This is, I think, like the first proper fan art in here that's not like a, an original thing. That was another thing. I do a lot of pinups and never any fan art, and now I'm starting to get better and I do fan art. This was a grown up chibi moon, my best friend, Vic who is very into Sailor Moon and Hatsune Miku. Uh, oh shoot, the Hatsune Miku event's happening in Destiny Child. I definitely don't play waifu games half the time, almost every day, and yes. Do I have a problem? No, I just really like anime girls battling it out. Yeah! If you ain't a big busty waifu, 
I don't want to see you. Okay. But I made the exception for her and I wanted to try and make this for her. And I did. And I succeeded. And I posted this. No, this didn't make the cut. This didn't make the cut. I remember now. This didn't make the cut. And I wasn't happy. I think the mouth was too weird. And I agree now. The mouth is too weird. This one was interesting. This is the first one that I think it still holds some merit. I could redraw it totally, but it still holds an idea. This is this is the most original idea. No, I had put white crayon to try like make her stand out more and whatever. And then I splattered blood everywhere. It's like a creepy ghosty geisha girl thing. Eh. It's not the greatest. I remember my uncle uh, asking me about it and just was like, he was very interested in my art. He would comment and he would try, he'd be like, oh, what is all of this? And I'd be like, yeah, it's my art. And he's, he's the one, my uncle's so sweet. This is not my internet uncle, by the way. This is my actual uncle. And he's, he's so nice about it and he's just very interested in my art and whatnot. And I made them like an art piece for Christmas and they framed it and it looks so nice. <laughs> And I'm happy that my aunt and my uncle were really happy. Now this, and this is why I know this is Christmas of 20, not this year, last year, the year before, 2017, because this doesn't have anything up here. There's no special ornaments up here. And I had just, I was sitting down while everyone was arriving for, I think, not New Year's, like the day after Christmas. No, it was Christmas Day. No, it's definitely Christmas Day because my cousins came over. Uh, I have no cousins my age, so obviously we don't really hang out, and that's why I have time to sit and draw this. But they were really impressed, and I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And so, yeah, so I just drew the Christmas tree, and I drew the thing. Yeah. Now, for Christmas, I had gotten my beloved Ohuhu markers, and that means these markers are about two years old. And I had just started using my markers. And this paper is compatible with markers, I will confirm. However, they do bleed through, so that is a warning. So, yeah, I had drawn something, and I kind of was learning how to blend, sort of. You know, I was working on it. And then I tried again. I just I was working on it. We were getting better at it, you know. We were trying our best. So yeah, moving on. Here we have the blessed, my blessed boy. I tried to draw my cat as a human. Yeah, I did. Actually, where is my, where's my big binder? <gasps> where's my big binder? Where's my big boy? Well, I don't know where my big boy binder is, but I had two, I got, also got a light box for Christmas, like a super cheap light box, and I had put this underneath, and I traced it, and then I tried doing it in watercolor and pencil, and then I also tried doing it in, um, what's the word, markers, I tried doing it in my hoo-hoo markers, and then I tried doing it in watercolors, I don't remember which one came out better, uh, and I don't see my uh, big boy binder anywhere. Is it underneath there? No. No, okay, that means it's been moved. Well, it got moved, so next. And so also I drew just like my animals and my cousin's animals and my animals, just all the animals, okay. And as you can see in the little corners, we have like the descriptions. So this is Tank, my dog, my brother's dog. The dog in the family, you know, just the dog. He's the dog that you sometimes see in my videos, but he's not as superior as my cat named Nolan. Isn't that right, honey? He's over there sleeping. And then this is Maggot. This is the newest addition to my aunt's family of beautiful, beautiful dogs. Um, she's very rambunctious. She's still a puppy. I think she's grown up a little bit more since I've drawn this. But her and Tank would play together and it was so cute. And then this is Titch and Baby. That's Titch, that's Baby. Uh, they're sisters, they're twin sisters. And uh, Baby's obviously much bigger, and Titch is obviously less bigger. And they love each other very much, and it's very cute. And then here I was just drawing stuff with my pink pencil, because pink pencil rock. 
I think also they're non-photo, but I don't know. But yes, pink pencil. This is the first OC. This is potentially... Okay, so this is the first OC and the first digital drawing. I had borrowed my friend's Wacom tablet, and I have the file somewhere, but this is Wicca, the weirdo witch. Oh my god. I think I had followed another Psychriacin tutorial, Psychriacin, Psychriacin, about shapes and the importance of shapes in your characters, and I had just tried my best to do a character, and this is like the first proper OC, but I've abandoned this OC. So yeah, and then this was supposed to, it was supposed to be a comic, I think. Yeah, it was supposed to be a comic. I see a single sad panel, and I don't even remember what the story was. That's just how bad it was. And then I have another character, very skinny, very snake-like. Not very good, but we're trying. I see my camera's about to cut out. Next page. This was supposed to be a little girl. I think I lightboxed this one. And this was supposed to be the sad comic page. And we're gonna take a quick intermission just to change the camera battery. Hello again, did you have a lovely break? I sure didn't, I just had to change my camera battery. So, moving on. Next page. This is supposed to be another character, and I actually did do this one digitally. Now, I didn't have a scanner at the time, so I used this camera right here that you are using to watch this video to take the pictures of these, and then Hugh's fire alpaca, because before I hadn't discovered Medibang yet. And I tried to use fire alpaca to do that, and then I... <laughs> oh, voice crack! Ugh. Okay. Now, I am sorry. Welcome to the chaos. Who's here for the chaos? I'm here for the chaos. Yay! But this right here is my first time with gouache. I think I had also gotten gouache for Christmas. I get everything for Christmas. Or from the thrift store. So either from Santa Claus or the thrift store, which is very nice. I like that. But I had just gotten gouache and I tried mixing it with watercolor and it kind of turned out okay. This is two-point perspective, but it's <sighs> it's not good. Next! Next. Just that, that doesn't really need explaining. That's just next. Ooh! Side profiles. Ooh, lovely. So, me and side profiles, and I think for many artists, side profiles and everyone don't really get along because a lot of the times they end up looking, what is the word, um, not homo sapien, that just means human, but Neanderthal! They end up looking very Neanderthal. Like they belong in the, the history museum as a diagram for what a Neanderthal or caveman looked like. So... Yeah, we, we're still working on side profiles, um, looking up tutorials, doing more work with them. Yeah, this is a nightmare. I don't want to look at this. Okay, where's my, where's my cover? And then, I think I was trying to dissect the planes of the face, but not doing it very well and not understanding exactly. Oh, Fight Club! Okay, so at this point in time, I was also part of a club. This was the gardening club, and I was the photographer for the gardening club because I had a nice camera. Um, and I would take pictures and I would help pull out weeds and stuff. And it was my super awesome science -y teacher. And he wanted a picture for Fight Club. Like he wanted like a logo or something like that. And he wanted to get it printed. Did that ever happen? No, and actually Gardening Club has been disbanded since. So, I gave him his photo, but it never ended up coming to any fruition, tuition, nothing ever happened with it. So, yeah, kind of sad, but he wanted it to be called Fight Club, and I forgot what the actual meaning was, but I know fight is some sort of Greek word for something related to garden or greenery or something. This is the one I ended up going with. It kind of, kind of worked. It was 
kind of cool. And then this, this I can actually, no, I can't pull it out. I don't have it. But this was um, my painting to uh, sketchbook cover that I decided I wanted. So I light boxed it and I did, you know, I also light boxed these, but then I also just colored them because I wanted to. But yeah, floating girl with a very poopy dress. Yes. Hold up, this looks familiar. I think I was listening to a lot of Kyoko. Kyoko? Kyoko. Kyoko, Kyoko, ah, no. Yeah, okay, so that, like, um, she's another Vocaloid person who does Vocaloid stuff. Musician, yes. Uh, Kyoko, creepy, symbolic music. Really good stuff. I think I should probably turn my light over here more. I think that works out a little bit better. Yeah, kind of. Uh, so obviously clouds to go. This is her umbrella, so obviously you can see here. She's supposed to have an umbrella. There's the top of the umbrella. Uh, trying to make my characters more 3D. I don't know. Um, more dark stuff. And then trying to paint keys. Objects are nice to draw. Another relaxing thing to do. And then building. I think I just found a building and I just was like... <laughs> building. Ooh, more stuff. Did I write insults on these? <laughs> I think I wrote insults on these. Fat. Wheat is... Wheat is... Permission. We just permission? Where is proportion? I think it was I think it's this proportion. Um I can't spell very well. I have dyslexia. Isn't it an excuse? Not really. I just I can't spell and it's it's kinda sad. So, uh, I try to fix my stuff, and I hope spell check doesn't mess me up. But I try. So when I come back to stuff, <sighs> this is what happens. And I'm like, oh, jeez, and I thought I spelled that right, too. This says, F your shadows, mate. Faggy. Wow. I was so edgy, oh my god. Yeah, queen of the gay club, here I come. The hell is this? Set into tribe skinwalkers. Ah! 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 Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where? Where? She's in here. Yes, okay. Comic attempt number two. I actually wrote down the stuff. So I was also very into you know, the good old fashioned uh, real true horror stories. Let's read uh, Lazy Masquerade, you know, Corpse Husband, you know, those people. And so I was, at the time, I think I heard a lot about skinwalkers, and I think those stories were super interesting, and they still super are super interesting, okay? I highly recommend them. But uh, I think I was trying to do some tribal stuff and that <sighs> I don't know why I do stories that I can't I can't ever finish a story or just work with it it's hard work you know god I need to work on my storytelling I do I really do um wait a second wait a second I think I have a comic I think I have a fully fleshed out comic like a full page. Like a page that took like five hours to do. Where is that? I'm missing everything. This book has so much context that, ugh. Ugh, that's why this book took so long. Because there's so much floating information. Like there's so much stuff that's coming back to me opening this book 
that has other stuff relevant to it that I cannot find because I reorganize my stuff and when I look at my content box, the content box is basically uh, all my sketchbooks and I can't find it. What? It's not in my content box. That means it's somewhere else floating around. I'm guessing that is because that sketchbook is not done and that's why it's not in the content box. That means it's floating around somewhere else. Is this it? This is it! Oh my god! Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay. Digression. We need context. Context is king. This is the oldest sketchbook I actually own. This is for my 11th birthday. Thank you, parents. But I only started this sketchbook maybe during like the first half of this sketchbook. So, no, this was during painting. Okay, so this is earlier. But this, this sketchbook doesn't really have much in it. However, I picked it up because I wanted a bigger sketchbook with a bigger page. This is the first planned out page of a comic. This is this. Oh my god, we're discovering so much stuff. But anyway, this story right here, I think I just wrote it down. And then I remembered it. And then I started doodling. There's like more doodles of this character and her daughter and whatnot. And they're all rubbish. And I tried sticking with the story for quite a bit of time. Like, I think it's taken over more pages. But I tried conveying that into a page. And this, I tried doing that. Oh, that's horrible. And then I tried doing this. Gotta keep that out of there. But yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah. Ah. Uh, that was my first comic page. Why well, put in parentheses? Because I've never posted anywhere. I never finished it. I did digitally clean it up, but it turned out so bad and so miserable. And I was using my pad tablet because I think I had gotten my uh, Gaumon Mark VI. And because I have, I can't hand-eye coordination and I suck. And that's why those are so frustrating for me. That's why I use my screen tablet. But yes. So this was the first time I ever tried to do a comic. Hmm. Fascinating. Back to this sketchbook. We can now go back. So obviously these are all just like trying to develop the character, the style I want. So at this time, I don't even think I have a proper style because I just wasn't really happy. This is just how I drew stuff. Like, I don't know. Your style, it depends. There's like a forced style and a natural style. Someone can go over it better than I can. But this was my just like natural style because I didn't know much and I just wanted to convey stuff and make it simple. So this just simplified what I knew. Whatever. You know, we're just, we're trying stuff. Ooh, these are markers. These are markers. So these are like Crayola markers or whatnot. And since they're water soluble, you can like with them with a, like a water pen and they kind of like dissolve like watercolors. It's fun. It's a good technique to try out. Like I had, that's what I'd done here. Cause markers are so much easier to like carry around with you than like a palette of watercolor. But it doesn't replace watercolor sadly. It's just a quick way to get in some color on mixed media paper. And then this was a bunny head man. This feels and looks like India ink. So I'm gonna take a guess and say I had bought my tiny bottle of India ink because we were starting to use it in painting too with our watercolor unit. So I really liked it and I was like, oh my God, I need this. And I bought myself a bottle of India ink and I still use India ink from time to time but not as much as I thought I would. And now I'm stuck with like a big gallon bottle of India ink that is just sitting but I still use it occasionally. It's just a lot of ink. Okay. Why does this feel like I've transitioned into a different year? Why does this feel like I've transitioned to a different year? I don't think... Hmm. 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 I'm trying to think whether or not this is carried over to the second half of my junior year. 
It must have been, because I have not touched the sketchbook in a year. So this has to have been, like a good year or two, so this has to have been during English class. I think so, because I was looking up poses. This is a lot of remembering for me. So you're gonna, we're, we're both learning stuff here. But yes, I had tried to do a detailed pose reference thing. Yeah, uh, this is another pose reference thing. My proportions are bad, everything's bad, I'm fully aware everything's bad. But I worked on it, and this is what practice looks like. This is what the start of something looks like. But am I ashamed to look at it sometimes? Half-heartedly, yes. But I know this is my origins. And you gotta keep practicing. This was another thing, this was kind of cute, and I really like the colors. I don't remember if this was pen, watercolor, or what, but this was cute. I enjoyed this. Also, I'm the queen of ballpoint pen at this point in time. Everything's done in ballpoint pen. Everything. Yeah, everything's done in freaking ballpoint pen. Damn, look at me go. <sighs> oh, this is exhausting. I think this book's cursed. It's draining all the energy out of me. Okay. Something tells me this is the... Oh. This is another revolutionary port in time. A big game, this is a game again, that had a huge influence on me at the time, and I still, to pieces, think this game has a massive influence on me. And like, how my style and artistically how I wanted to evolve. It's Hello Charlotte. I do not reckon it. <laughs> Mushmouth, I have Mushmouth. How am I a YouTuber if I have Mushmouth? Oh my god. But. Hello Charlotte is a fantastic game. It contains subjects of mental health, uh, loss, family, and just a lot of good stuff. And it's portrayed in a very interesting way. It's a very... Uh, I'm just going to give the warning. It's a graphic game. It's not at all like Doki Doki Literature Club at all. But it's in the same realm of weird and whack. It's a whack game. But the artist is phenomenal. It's an RPG game. It's like a JRPG game. And I think it's on Steam. But it's also on Manly Badass Hero. Yeah, Manly Badass Hero also does a complete playthrough of it. Uh, and I think at the end of the whole series, he says, I don't recommend this to everybody. But it's a very good game. Like, it's a phenomenal game. If the game was about something different... I, and it was still like the style and it was still just as good. I would recommend it. But because of, I think the game has such like a personal meaning to the maker. And it's just, it's such an incredible game. It's, 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 it's a weird game. I recommend you to, if you want to, if, you, if you're interested at why I think it's like such a weird game. Proceed with caution, kind of. It's not super bad, but it's not super good. Like, <sighs> content wise. It's a good game, I recommend it personally, but just, it's not for everybody. There we go. But the art style that that person draws in, magnificent. It's been a while since I've looked at it, but uh, I think it's not this page necessarily, but it's definitely this style. Like The reason why I circled is because this one has like the most emphasis on the style. It's so... <sighs> it's evolved anime. That's what I like to call it. It's evolved anime because it's got an evolved nose. Like, <sighs> like these styles, they're, like, they're getting closer. But it's like... That one is like the emphasis of Charlotte. The, the character's name is Charlotte and I think she's... I think she's, she's a sweetie. If you, if you know which Charlotte it is. <laughs> Spoiler. But as I think this is more reference practice. Lord have mercy on what any of this is. <sighs> the reason why I find this cringy is because I know I can do it better. It's just, I look at this now and I'm like, geez, that's where I started? Like, I know I can do all of this better. And I know I've evolved. But this is just, this is where you start. This is where you start. You don't have to be the best as soon as you put the pencil on the paper. You work towards that. There's no start. But, 
there's like these are more pages of me trying to develop my style uh, in the Hello Charlotte style because I love that style. Oh, and here's also the start of a bunch of strawberries. This carries over to another sketchbook I would bring with me because it was smaller and it wasn't wire bound and I had learned how to make sketchbooks at the time with a zine, uh, a zine stapler. Uh, I was a violent kid. <sighs> Damn. But these are all with like markers and pencil. Like I feel it's pencil and that's marker. Um, I don't know. I think I still have that binder somewhere, but it's part of a different sketchbook at this point in time. And that would have to be on the next milestone, everybody. I think that would be the 2K sketchbook. That is the Frankenstein sketchbook. Uh, that's what I'm just going to call it now. It's the Frankenstein sketchbook. If you want to see that sketchbook, get myself to 2K. Come on, everybody. Comment down below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that share button. We can do it. Hit that bell notification button. Bell squad fam. Peace community cult. Let's go. I'm just kidding. I'm not that enthusiastic about that. <laughs> It comes when it comes. We'll just let it happen. But that's going to be part of that sketchbook. So if you want to see more strawberries, just that's what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, a lot of Hello Charlotte. Um, Hello Charlotte is a bit of a graphic game, just to let you know. That is why there's a lot of, oh no, I have bruised cheek. Oh no, my head got cut off. <laughs> oh no, more decapitated heads. Oh jeez. Okay, actually... This is quite a relevant topic. Uh, I drew this at the hairdressers. And I got my hair cut yesterday by the same hairdresser. Yay! So yeah, this was a figure study. This was, I guess it's timeless. Um, I just had a magazine, I drew it. Uh, <sighs> Lord help these ladies' foots. And then this is more markers. Why does that look like Yuri? I don't know who that is. OC? Pin up! Yeah. We're just gonna move on. <laughs> Vent page? Question mark? I know I wasn't upset when I made this page, but I think I was just like, oh, I know my art's, oh, I know my art's not that good. This is the realization. I had started to creep more into the, oh my God, look at all these artists, all these internet artists. Oh, am I that good? No, but I'm gonna keep going. So this was just like a, stafu, I don't give e. My art is art. <laughs> Great page. Oh, okay, I think I know what this is. Um. I think this was one of a Lavender Town's like style videos maybe or something where she showed a picture of her old like her old styles what could have been and I think I really liked one of them they resonated with me and I think this one was it but I don't remember and it's very badly copied it looks nothing like this but just I'm getting memory that they think that was it this I liked because you know faded cheek blushies everywhere now this, this is another thing where I'm going to have to find my big black boy portfolio. My big boy portfolio. Uh, it just holds loose pieces because this is all practice. I had just gotten a fashion book. It was a library book. Uh, and it was, a, it was a really good book just to learn how fashion art is drawn. Just, you know, classic fashion art. It's not something super detailed. It's just fashion art. It's scribbly, sketchy fashion art. And I was copying and making like a rainbow, not copying, but like making a rainbow of like looking at the style of dresses and then kind of copying the style of dress. And those are all hideous. And I saw them the other day, but I can't remember where I put my big black boy portfolio. And so yeah, this is like, I think warm ups. Oh geez. I think this is attempt number four at comic. Meet. Mel and Cat. I still have some pride in these two little Mel's. Mel, I think was supposed to be a drug dealer. <laughs> uh, some crazy heartless drug dealer with a fake 
ooh-woo personality type. And then you have the cold, stoneless, white knight cat that is probably about six foot. And Mel was probably like five foot. And yeah. Her drug teddy bears. Oh my god! The drug teddy bears! No! Oh, I actually do have their sizes. The cat was supposed to be six foot. And Mel was uh, four, five foot four. And... If you guys know me, I do not draw characters. I've never shown me drawing characters together. It's always been a singular character, and I have never drawn characters interacting. And I think it's because this image is super cursed. This is a super duper, super duper, 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 duper cursed image. It just looks so weird. Oh my god. For me, it just looks so weird, and I can see everything that's wrong with it, but at the time I thought it was okay. And I look at this now, I'm like, this is not okay. What is, what is that arm? What is this midget? What are those legs? What is this? Why? Like even the little thumbnail in the corner is better. Like, what is this? Please. Oh, shoot, okay. This page is a fun one. So I realized I was coming to the end of the sketchbook. So I was kind of just like not giving a, an F. Advertiser friendly, not giving an F, even though I'm not monetized. <laughs> my mom says no swearing in my videos and that's why. And I respect that. It's just, it's not the most professional thing, but you know what? There is a time and a place for everything. <laughs> this. I was trying to use one of my really, really cheap uh, water pens and I tried putting ink in it to see if that the ink would be thicker and because I had already knew they dripped. So, because I'd seen people make watercolor pens where it's just like the straight watercolor in them and mine didn't work. In fact, the pen got my whole hand covered in ink and that's why you see just like little like thingy prints. And so I ended up just dumping out the pen, squeezing all the ink out and rubbing it everywhere. And then taking my white gel pen and drawing something mystical that looks like it should be in a horror novel book thing game. And so here we're testing out color palettes and we're getting better at side profiles. Kind of. This technique is kind of interesting with the lines. It makes it work proportionally. You know what, I, I don't, mm. I don't know if it completely works, to be honest. Ah, oh, yeah, Mel and her drug bears. Oh, jeez. So I had also tried color combinations with my, oh, hoo-hoo markers. Royal blue. Oh, this is the same blue. Here, royal blue. Interesting. Oh, this is a Copic marker. I don't own those. I only have, like, four. I have, I have like, a couple of Copic markers. But I only came in contact with these recently, and they're nice. <laughs> oh, hoo hoo markers aren't bad. I make jokes and whatnot, but they're not bad. It's just, I don't think they age well. That's another thing. These markers, I think, like, they don't age well because they don't have refills. And then the nibs get really stiff and whatnot. They just, they don't age well. I think they're good for starter markers and they have great ink and whatnot and great capabilities and a good decent color range if you get the 80 set or the 40 set. But it's just, I don't think they age very well because once it evaporates, you have to buy the set again. So it's not worth it. So find markers with refills, please. Just save your money, get mid-range markers and buy ones that have refills. Whether it's Art and Fly, um, Studio Blick, or if you're really saving up all your money, and you want to get ones, just get the Copic Chows with the refills. There's no need for sketch unless there's like a specific color. You just get the Chows and then like get a blank Chow and put like your like your Copic sketch color in there. There you go, there's your solution. Oh, here's me testing out eye shapes, you know, because I randomly draw eyes everywhere. I think I've actually got like a whole stack of papers. Yeah, whole stack of papers. But um, yeah, so this is more Mel? No, this has to be Cat. 
Yeah, this is cat doodles, just figuring out what cat wants to look like. And, oh my god, I've never seen someone looking like a wine bottle in my life. Look at her wine bottle looking behind. She looks like a freaking wine bottle with a sweatshirt on it. Like a wine, you guys know how wine bottles are, like wine bottle, wine cup, wine glass, with the back. It's okay, honey. Sorry, my cat sneezed and it scared the daylights out of me. I get scared very easily, yet I like horror movies. <laughs> Comment down below five facts you know about me from hearing me ramble. Not just in this video, but in general. That'll be interesting to know. That'll tell you how far you got in the video to show your dedication to the cult. Ooh. Welcome to the art cult, people. Next. Okay. So this is cat. Monster. It says monster on the bat. Oh my god. Well, that explains a lot. Well, oh yeah, well, this would have been this page, so. Yeah! Yeah! Gray hair and red eyes. Not bad. Just. Hmm. Oh, well, well, look at that dandy do. We made it to the back page. Could this sketchbook have been filled up more? Most likely. Because you know what? I was working on my double page skills, you know? You know, man? And at the time, I had teachers that were kind of butthurt about me whipping out a sketchbook, being like, yo, I'm about to draw while I listen to your lecture. And they were like, haha, yeah, no. So there's a lot of paper doodles lined paper doodles and that will potentially be a bonus meme sketchbook tour in a later date ha 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 gotcha part two coming soon part next next series i guess will be at 2k if I have, okay, here's the plan, everybody. If you're still listening and you still care about the old sketchbook tours, they will be out every milestone. Every milestone we hit, I will reveal the part, a part in my history of how I got to art. However, comma, recent sketchbook tours of me just trying to, oh, I was gonna say flex. <laughs> Weird flex, yeah, no. Uh, but just to show off my more recent art that I have more confidence in and is much more recent and just kind of shows my current skill will be done whenever I feel like it. <laughs> oh, so great. So, yeah. But this, however, this will be done. Yes. That's like the only thing I can actually keep. So, every, every milestone that I can think of that has some significance. So, like, yeah, let's get those milestones, people. I'm tired. I'm sorry. This has been my very first sketchbook tour that I completed last year. Yes. Okay. Bye-bye.